I don't think uh, reason has anything to do with the challenge. I mean, the, the challenge is, is not about uh, what is right and what is wrong. The challenge is about people being able to hear each other and, and communicate with each other. You know, I, uh, my family has a farm in Vermont and we have a farm in Maine. And, and we, we, so for years I've, I've journeyed eight hours back and forth. And all of that, um, that traveling is on small back roads. You know, there's no highway. So for eight hours, I do it once every six weeks. Most of that goes through Trump, what, is, what would today be called Trump territory. And, um, you know, it's rural, northern New England, um, the place and the people that I probably love the most and, and connect the most to, they have really gotten a, a raw deal by our country, you know, because of NAFTA and, you know, other things. A lot of folks in those rural places are without, you know, mill jobs have dried up and, you know, things have, have disappeared. And it could be that it's, that that's better for our country overall. But there has been victims. And so I, I definitely get why those victims feel, um, you know, wanted to disrupt a system and, 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 you know, don't necessarily care about reason. What they, they care about is, is being heard. How could it be in our 240 year experiment in democracy <laughs> that we would understand each other so little and that we, we could be in this polarized place? All of that is due to the fact that we've, we've lost the ability to talk to one another. And again, I don't think reason has anything to do with it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, my, my work is not so much in conservation today, it's really in facilitating. It's, it's facilitating dialogue across difference because that's, that's the step that's needed before conservation or good democracy can happen. We've had policies that have been good for our nation as a whole that have left some people behind. And we saw the impact of that. And, you know, a really great politician is one who says, I represent everyone. A really good conservationist is one who says, my work is for everyone. So my work, our work needs to be for every American, including the one who right now thinks that I'm an elitist snob who doesn't see the challenges that they face in their life. So my job is to try to, as best I can, demonstrate that I do see and I do understand. You know, I, I, I chose to become a farmer so that I can relate to the people who connect to the land through their livelihood, through cutting trees. And that's such a bigger constituency than the members of the National Wildlife Federation or the members of the Nature Conservancy or Trust for Public Land. And I, I want to I go there. You know, there's a great bumper sticker that was floating around Berkeley actually for a long time. It was, um, uh, uh, are you an environmentalist or do you work? A question mark. <laughs> and, and meaning that, that, there, that people who work the land um, have a different ethic but it is a powerful ethic. And I can say 20 years in now, I work the land. And that, um, I'm very, very proud of that. Yeah. I'm proud that we raise animals. I'm proud that, that, that I have blood on my hands with nature. And I also care for nature. And that enables me to, to connect with a whole swath of America who does the same. The 8% of Americans still earn some livelihood from the land. At most, 1% of Americans are members of environmental organizations. I want to side with the 8%. If you, if you want to be relevant, we, you, conservation has to be about work. It has to be about blood and guts. It has to be about economy. It has to be about people's relationship to their families, to other people. It has to be real. It cannot be just about recreation. It cannot be about scenery. And it cannot be just about biodiversity. 
And I just fundamentally do not believe that we are going to protect biodiversity through laws and, and through legislation. We will only protect biodiversity through people feeling connected to it. We will only protect it through hunting and, and people who f feel animals and, and, and know what that is like and have it is. And that is such a bigger audience than the people who connect to it through their head, who are scientists. And, and we need both those worlds, the, the, the heads and the hearts. We need them together. Yeah. And it's, it is more than possible.